36 years of basketball knowledge and life skills. Your host, Coach Goins, focuses on today's topics on and off the court, helping players and coaches achieve their goals. So get ready for another fast break episode of Basketball More Than a Game with your host, Coach Goins. Hey, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It's that time of week again. Yes, it's Coach Goins, and I'm back in the studio in the Commonwealth of Virginia. And you know what's popping? It is NCAA weekend. That is right. And we've got a dynamic show set up for you tonight. So make sure you got your sneakers on. You got them laced up tight because via telephone, we're not going to tell you who we have on. But you know what? You He's been here before. Uh, he's been a mainstay on the show. We've got to have him back. Uh, for this final four weekend. But before we do, we want to make sure that we give a shout out to our title sponsor. And that's none other, none other than Mr. Curtis Jackson, your independent insurance agent out of the great state of North Carolina, as well uh, as serving now Southern Virginia. So for your insurance needs, please reach out to Curtis at 919-614-5796. Again, 919-614-5796 for your insurance needs. And let them know that you heard about them right here on Basketball More Than a Game podcast. And we certainly appreciate him and his staff for his continued support as we continue to push the envelope and making sure that people understand the process that basketball is more than the game. So listen, it is hot and heavy. Folks, the flights are going in and everybody's rocking and rolling. But first of all, we want to bring over our number one co-host this side of heaven, none other than Coach Coach Mike T. Quick. Coach Quick, welcome to Basketball More in the Game. Glad to be here, Coach Goins. Thanks for having me for this edition of NCAA Final Four weekend. Hey, you know what? We would be we would be remiss if we didn't have you on this horn. So listen, it is locked and loaded. Everybody's, uh, you know, super hyped about getting ready to get into the Final Four. And, and the big fella, I talked to Ralph uh, earlier today uh, for UVA fans, and he was headed out to, to the Final Four. So, so happy for the, the Cavaliers. But most importantly, I'm, I'm happy for him. Uh, he is a, definitely a true friend, and he's been on this show, and uh, we'll have him back on again. And it just didn't line up for him to uh, be on with us today because he is traveling. Uh, but, again, just uh, not pulling for the Cavaliers, but I am pulling for Ralph. Uh, and, again, some, somebody says that's kind of a little bit of oxymoron, but, you know, they didn't win it when he was there, and he understands that. But most importantly, uh, they've gotten back in the thick of things. So, without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and, and drop it over to Coach Quick. So, he's going to open this thing up. and going to take the lead, and I'm just going to be his wingman. All right, Coach, you got it. Yes, first and foremost, I would just like to say it's been one heck of a ride this college basketball season. Um, I've thoroughly enjoyed the season, and now it's getting ready to cultivate in the Final Four in Minneapolis. And um, it's truly a blessing. My team, the Heels, aren't there, but I certainly picked them to get there. But uh, nevertheless, I'm a basketball fan at the end of the day, and I'm looking forward to watching the Final Four. And, um, and I, you know, I'm sort of like you, Coach Goins. I'm, ro- I'm rolling with the Virginia Cavaliers basically because they're from the ACC. But I'll tell you what, it's hard not to pull for Bruce Pearl and the Auburn Tigers. You know what, that's such a, that's such a, you know what, that's why he's on the show, ladies and gentlemen, and you know that because he's no stranger to this podcast. But, Coach, you're exactly right. You know, when you look at it, and I was really thinking about that on, on the way home uh, this afternoon, and I'm riding and I'm going, you know what, it's Final Four. Let's talk about those teams. And I was just kind of running through and kind of getting my mind around this thing. You know, what Bruce Pearl has done at Auburn, you know, I'm excited for him. I'm excited for the program. I'm also excited for Charles Barkley. But not just – um Auburn, you look at, you know, Virginia hadn't been there in almost 30 years. You look at Texas Tech, they've never been there. So you've got four teams, excuse me, three teams that's never been there. And, of course, you never can count out Coach Izzo uh, because his body of work is always there. But, you know, you're you're right quick. When you look at my bracket, and let's talk about a little bit of the brackets right now. Uh, My bracket bracket was busted. My Sweet 16 was intact. Uh, I was uh, was only – I had 14 teams – uh, there and I only missed two teams, but from that point in, buddy, it was like it was. I, I was like the Titanic, and I had like major holes in my bracket because when the heels went down, and just to be transparent, I had the heels winning it all. Just thinking that you know their backcourt play as deep as they were, if that three ball was going to be falling, uh, I did have Carolina there, I did have uh, Tennessee there, I did have Duke there, and uh, who was the fourth one? I had uh, Kentucky there. Uh, so of course, uh, you know, licking my wounds and sitting back and looking, and it would be great for a team that uh, has never won the national championship to win it. Uh, but if uh, Tom Izzo pulls it out, you know, I, I still couldn't be, still couldn't be upset with that. What do you think, Coach? 
Well, I'll tell you this. Uh, my final four, you know, I had my Tar Heels. I had um, Duke. I had um, Virginia. And I had Michigan beating Gonzaga to get there. But nevertheless, Texas Tech came out of that bracket. And, man, I tell you, when you talk about a ball club that plays defense, I've never seen a team play defense in the last 10 years that Texas Tech is doing. I mean, Chris Beard, he, he's one heck of a coach. If he's not the coach of the year in college basketball this year, it's, it's a travesty if you ask me. But he's got his guys locked and loaded. But um, I happen to think, I think Virginia is going to win the um, national championship. I think Texas Tech rides come to, comes to an end tomorrow night against Michigan State and Tom Izzo. And I like Tony Bennett and the Cavaliers with their style of play taking down um coaches over in the Michigan State Spartans in the national championship game. Oh man, so he's he's got this thing lined up. Let's talk about that. So you so the defense that the Cavaliers put on the floor is gonna give uh give Auburn a little, uh, little challenge? Yeah, I, I I don't think Auburn will be able to um to speed Virginia up and by no stretch of the imagination I just don't see that happening. And I think Virginia at the end of the day, their style will will wear Auburn down and, uh, and and they'll be on their way to the national championship game. You know, and, and and here's the thing that I've really you know taken a hard look at um, at UVA this year because not only are they in in, in my back door, uh, but going to the game and, and just watching them play, and I've really really struggled with um, not their not the way they play, but it's just what they do. You know, from the down screen and when those guys come off of the the bottom pick. Uh, you'll see, you know, Jack Salt, you know, they, they always hipping these guys, you know. So what I'm asking the viewers and, and the listeners, when you watch the game and you watch Virginia play, just watch what their bigs do on that screen. So when Kyle guys coming off the bottom, they always give them that little bit of nudge. Uh, had the opportunity to go over when they played Pitt and uh, saw Coach Capel, you know, really work that thing. And, and really what they were doing was instead of the guy coming underneath, they were going over the top. You know, and and as a coach, and, and when I looked at that thing, I was like, wow. Because when they step, when they say, if I'm coming off the baseline and I'm defending Cal Guy, when I get right to the edge, any one of the uh, the bigs, they're going to give you that little bit of hip, just enough to get you open, so you can turn around and and and, and make that uh, and make that shot. But I call him Miss Clairol One Twenty One. Somebody said, why you call the kid, you know, Miss Clairol One Twenty One? Because he's got his hair dyed. You know, I struggle with his last name. Uh, uh, he's the kid that hit the shot, Coach. Uh, Diakite. Yeah, what's his name? Mamadou Diakite. Yeah, yeah. I call him Miss Clairol 121. And somebody said, why you call him Miss Clairol 121? I said, that's because uh, he got his hair dyed, and that's uh, color 121. Uh, to give him that, uh, that's just me being facetious. But, no, uh, you know, if, if Tony Bennett wins, he's a classy guy uh, and just appreciate what he's done for the Cavaliers. But most importantly, Importantly, I just want to see a great game Saturday tonight, and I want to see great a great game Monday night. Yeah, and and I think you will. I think I think Virginia and Auburn will be a good game. I just don't think Auburn will be able to speed Virginia up. They're going to try to shoot the three ball. When the way that they've shot it over the last month, I just I don't see them getting those open looks against Virginia that they've gotten against everybody else so far. I mean, you think about Auburn's road. Um, to the to the final four, they beat Kansas, North Carolina, and Kentucky, three of the top blue bloods in the country, to get to the final four. Now you're playing another another school in Virginia, who had arguably the greatest college basketball player to possibly ever play the game, and the legendary Ralph Sampson. I mean, their 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 ride to the Final Four has just been an amazing, amazing accomplishment. And all hats off to Bruce Pearl and his kids. You know what? That, that's a great call out. And and I have to say this: people, and, and when they look back on it, their first game, the first night, they only won by a point. Right. Yes, sir. <laughs> and I saw that. I was like, man. And when actually, when I when I saw Auburn play, and it, correct me if I and I want to think they played in in Maui. I could be wrong. But it they was did. Played, okay. Yep, That's the Blue Devils yeah. Maui. That was the that was the first time I saw them play. Uh, was this year early in the Maui Classic, and I remember telling my buddy, I was like, you know what, Auburn is going to be something to reckon with. And he, and you're exactly right. You know, that, that's a great call out, Coach. And you know, and that's the thing I love about you, man. Is no, you know, end of the day, you're going to give respect where respect is. 
Uh, you're going to recognize talent. You're going to recognize the ACC, you know, because there's so many people that, you know, they don't like, you know, Coach K, so they wouldn't be pulling for Duke. They don't like, you know, Virginia. If their team doesn't win it, you know, they don't want any part of it. But that's uh, that's the class guy that you are. That's the person that, you know, you respect the game, you honor the game, uh, and which means a lot. You know, everybody has their opinions, but when people just cannot see um, the talent that is in front of them, they can't see – you know uh, what the kid brings to the table. You know, I, I, it, it, they're look to me. They're looking through. Uh, they're looking. They're looking in the wrong lens. Yes, sir. You know, when you look at you take a kid like Zion. You I mean, yeah, he's at Duke, but you know, the kid is an amazing. He's amazing talent. You know, I don't care if he was playing for, you know, Union Pines Vikings. You know, bottom line to it is, uh, he was. You know, he was out as many games as he was out and came back and he was dropping. You know, thirty one a night. You know, like it, you know, and I always, anytime somebody would bring him up, I said, you want him on your team? Oh, it ain't. And then, of course, they changed it. You know, they changed their whole opinion up about it. But, you know, I, I think you're right. Uh, the coach from Texas Tech definitely needs to be uh, unanimous uh, coach of the year. Will he get it? You know, we know and how politics run sometimes on that grapevine. Uh, but let's talk, let's talk about these one and dones. I saw a photo the other day. Let me kind of prep this and I'll toss it back over to you. I saw a photo of last year's Duke team. Uh, last year's Duke team, you know, there it was. It had, you know, all the guys there, uh, Bagley and, uh, um, gosh. Uh, uh, Wendell Carter. Wendell Carter, thank you. And then they had uh, Trent, and then they had the point guards. It was only it was four of them that they had up there. And then up underneath that, they had this year's team. And then the, the caption was, no Final Four. Me, honestly, after I've you know, taken a hard look at this thing over the last couple of years, if I was a big-time college coach, and the kid want to come, you know, what What do you tell him? Do you tell him no? But here's the thing. I would I would be, if I was Mike Krzyzewski, I would be so tired of having to go back and repeat myself because you can never layer on. If I'm teaching you the game one way, I can't, we can't go, next year I can't turn the page. Next year I go back to, next year I go back and I'm back in the library and I'm taking a book off the shelf. I can never go to chapter two if if, if everybody's following what I'm saying. So every year I go back to the library and I take another book off the shelf. I can never sit down and go to chapter two because I got, I, I'm always starting over from the beginning. So let me hear from you, Coach. Okay. I, I'm going to say this in regards to the one and done rule. First and foremost, I, I, I think kids, once you're 17, 18 years old, getting ready to graduate high school, I think you should, if you're that good, you should be allowed to do what you want to do, and that is go to the NBA. If you choose to go to college, that's even better for me because I'm a big-time college basketball fan. Mm-hmm. But I must say this: I don't. I'm like you. I don't think that one and duns are going to continue or will be able to win championships at a high level at the collegiate level. I just I can't see it. I'm like Roy Williams. Give me a mixture of the one and duns and and some of those guys who are going to stay. That's not as good, but they're going to work their rear ends off and be able to get us get get to their junior and senior years and then get to a Final Four and win a national championship. Although this season, as, as we see, the one-and-done concept has hurt Carolina to a degree because they lost, in my opinion, their top player this year, Kobe White, as well as the sixth man in the Sear Little. So I, I just – I think in a year or so – Kids, are, the rule is going to change. So you're going to have a more level playing field then. And Coach K, John Calipari, Coach Cal, those guys are going to have to start back building teams with guys that got to stay two and three years in college. You know, and, and I agree with you totally. I mean, I don't want people to misunderstand. It. You know, my point is, you know what, if, if a kid wants to go straight out of high school, let them go. Just let them roll. Because, you know, unfo- oh, all right, let's, let's, let's take the Duke guys. So they, at the end of the day, let's just say they finish the season and they don't win the national championship. Okay, that's great. And, and guess what? There's only one team that will ever win the national championship. So you've got all these other squads, but that's a horse of a different color. But my point is this. So if you go out and say you come out, I'm going to use you, Coach Quick. You come out and you can go straight from Union Pines High School to the NBA. And, and the pros tell you he's that good. Let them go. I agree. If the if you'd come back around and says no, we would not draft him, 
And it says, okay, and it's got to be, say, half the league. You come up with a rule and say 50% would say, yeah, they would draft you. 50% say they wouldn't. So they, you know, 49% says no. Then you have to go to college, and you have to go to college for two years. I think they need to, they need to put the line in the sand and say if you're a top five player. Because the flip side of that, the NBA wants these guys to come out. Why? And here's my opinion. It's my opinion, our show, so we're going to talk about it. Is because if I come out, if I'm in the NBA, that means that's a roster spot that somebody's gonna lose. And if I look, and if I look at the roster, and if 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 they're not playing in the NBA three or four years, I don't have to pay them a pension. So every year that they come in, there's gonna be that movement of a draft player coming into a team. Say if there's a 12 man roster, let's just say the Hornets. So he got Jordan's got 12 guys on his team. Say he picks up a Zion Williams. Somebody's going to the house. So now, therefore, I'm down. To, I'm automatically down to 11 players. Now, there's going to be some trading. So now I'm down to 10. But at the end of the day, game-wise, season starts, I'm going to have, say, 12 guys dressed out on that bench. So in that whole league, how many – and see, the league never discloses this. How many guys get washed out of the league? So when they get washed out and they've been there a year or two years or three years, the NBA says, okay, we appreciate you. We'll see you later. Because – they're not they've they haven't been in the league long enough to be able to you know get that you know get that pension so therefore i come out say i came out two years ago and i haven't been playing but i came out you look at like what's the kid that was at duke uh jabari parker yes sir you know and then, and then you get guys like zion that that, that will probably be pretty decent in the nba because you know the game is the game is wide there's no you know no zone defense but you get a guy like uh, what's your what's your what's your six man um, little? little. If he needs to be going to the NBA, it's, it's like I'm, I need to put my name in the hat. He's he's as ready for the NBA as I am ready to the 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 guard Shaq. That's my opinion, because what I look at is the well being of the kid. So the kid plays thirty seven. Let's just say he plays forty games in college. And that's making it to the national championship. Now, what are you going to do next year when you play in the NBA and you're going to play 80? You're going to double that with all the travel, all that distraction. And those key, all those kids mentally able and does the league set them up or they just give them a boatload of money. He's on the squad. The next thing you know, all that melee is going on. And then where, where is he going to be in five years? Because he wasn't a star. I mean, people will draft him maybe on his potential. But if he gets out there and then he becomes a bust, and the thing people I think about is like Joseph Forte. You know, yeah, Joseph, you know, he was a player. But when he went early, then he I think he played maybe like a year in Boston, and it's just like, okay, where is this guy at? Right, Rashad McCants as well. Right, and so these guys, these guys are players in college, but yet instead of staying and, and really refining and really, you know, really working the process, you know, they say, okay, I'm out and I'm gone and – well, people says, well, I don't want to stay long and, and because of an injury. I said, okay, you know what? Think about it. If you can cut, I, I'll, I'll use my man Paul George as an example. He had one of the most devastating injuries. In the, uh, think about it in the NBA. But he's back and he's playing at MVP level. You know, everybody says, well, you know, you, you can talk about what ifs all you want to, but, the, you know, the, the thing is it's, you know, it, it's taken away from the college game. And my thing is, is taken away from the player because the player only knows, but so much. And if, I'm like, I'm gonna be like Coach Roy. And uh, if I could get one kid, I would get one. But I would John Brown if I'd be out here trying to stack my deck. Well, look at Duke. Who was he gonna go to? I mean, he had no bench. He wasn't as you know. He wasn't as you know. You know, the Roy could look down and, and have ten players. And then Roy has a system. But now. You know, you get you get these freshmen in now. You starting all back over again. And Duke, man, they are going. You know, they could be. They could go from the top team down to. You know, they may be five hundred in the league next year. Oh wow! Yeah, and that, that's possible. Although I, I, they're reload. They have already reloaded, in my opinion. Now Carolina is the team that could actually be five hundred in the league, depending on what happens with grad transfers. Um, Cole, the Cole Anthony situation. Uh, I mean, as as the roster is cu- currently constructed right now, this could be your starting lineup in Chapel Thrill. Seventh Woods at point guard. Brandon Robinson at the two. Leaky Black at the three. Garrison Brooks at the four. And a freshman Armando Baycott at the five. 
Oh, now, where is yeah. he from? Where's your five man from? Uh, he's from Virginia. He's actually, I, if I'm not mistaken, Richmond, Virginia. Okay. Yes, sir. Um, he's playing with IMG Academy right now. Mm-hmm. Matter of fact, this team just won in the quarterfinal round of the Geico Nationals today. Um, they, they'll play again tomorrow. So hopefully, um, you know, he can help his team continue to advance. Folks, I just want to make sure you understand where you heard that from. You heard who's Carolina big man going to be next year in Chapel Thrill, and you heard it from Coach Quick. So any information about them Carolina Tar Heels, make sure you understand that Coach Quick is dialed in. His, you, you may not know it, and, and sometimes Roy doesn't know it. His office is in the Dean Dome. They just don't know he's he's in there. But he's got the uh, he, he's got the he's got the channel. He's got the uh, he's got the ear. But most importantly, uh, he loves the game. He understands the game. And he brings passion to what he's talking about. So, listen, before we jump on uh, into that next segment, I really want to stop and give uh, uh, give honor to uh, a new sponsor and a brand new company that's out. It's called Dynamic Gear uh, LLC, and they're based in Virginia. And their uh, tagline is the Dynamic Effect. So, if you need any custom uniforms with the Dynamic Effect, check these guys out. Their website is uh, incredible. The website is dynamicgearstore.com. They are right now they're addressing about uh, 29 teams. Uh, they just went into a couple of high schools. So these guys are rocking and rolling. So if you want that supplementation, and if people don't know what that supplementation is, you need to reach out and check these guys out. That's Dynamic Gear LLC. And we definitely thank their sponsorship as we move into the second part of this podcast, which we call In the Paint. And Coach Quick, here's what I really want to talk about is, is In the Paint. If you were, to, if you was, all right, we're gonna transition a little bit and look from the end. If you were a GM, and this draft was out here right now, who would, who, who would you look? Who, what would you, what, what's appealing to the guys that's coming out to you? Well, right now, uh, I, I would have to say Zion is the number one pick. And I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a pick, I'm gonna take Duke for a second. I'm gonna pick apart their, their top three guys. Gotcha. Zion Williamson right now, hey, if you're a franchise struggling like the Knicks or the Lakers, whomever, the Lakers not having trouble selling tickets, but uh, you take Zion, I mean, he, he's the he's the national player of the year as far as every category goes right now. I just, I have I have issues because he's, he's no more than 6'6". Six, six. He's got to play the power forward at the next level. His jump shot is pretty damaged right now, but the kid's a player. I, I'm not taking anything in the world from him. I haven't seen anything like him at the collegiate level. Okay, then I'm going to go with R.J. Barrett. R.J. Barrett's a stud. On most other squads, I mean, he would be the man, flat out, the absolute man. But nevertheless, he had to play beside Zion. His game is tailor-made for the pros. He can handle it. The jump shot needs, needs a little work on it. But, I mean, the kid's an athlete that can flat out get it done. I think he's going to have a long, successful NBA career. But if I'm picking a kid off that roster who I think will have the better pro career, and a lot of people are going to think I'm crazy for saying this, but it's Cam Reddish. Cam Reddish sacrificed the most on that Duke squad this year. But when you look at his skill set, Cam Reddish should have the better pro career out of all three of those guys. I mean, I compare him a lot to Grant Hill. I think Cam Reddish could play anywhere from the one to the four in at, in today's NBA. And I think he's going to be dynamic at the next level. Yes, this year he had some issues. You know, he, he had to fit in where he could with Zion and RJ. But if I had to take a guy that's going to have the better pro career, I'm going with Cam Reddish. All right, so listen, folks, right now I'm going to have to, you know, you heard it live right here on Basketball More in the Game. It's Coach Quick, our greatest host this side of heaven, and your host, Coach Goins. And listen, you know, I certainly appreciate you diving down in that and kind of really pulling on your back. And there's a reason why Coach Quick has said that, and I'm not putting him on the spot, but here's the deal. Uh, my, and here's what I really, really appreciate you know, on those comments, Coach, was this, is when you sit and you look, you only got one basketball. And somebody, somebody has got to give up something for the other guy to be able to, to to get the ink. And in that, all three of them couldn't get the ink. All three of them can't drop 20 a game. All three of them can't be player of the game. And I think that's an excellent call out. And uh, and when people look back on it, and I think Stephen A. Smith, you know, he, he took he took a real pot shot at the guy. 
Uh, when you look when Duke was down this year, I think to me, I think his best game, and that mean Cam Reddish, uh, was when they played uh, Kentucky. Excuse me, when they played Louisville in Louisville, and they were down 19. I mean, he and and he was the best three point, you know, by percentage, uh, best three point shooter on the team. So once you take you take that factor, you put him in the gym where he has nothing but time to work on his jump shot. Uh, and again, I'm going to tell you right now, you heard it uh, from basketball more in the game at six, about six fifteen on the eve of the Final Four 2019, that Coach Quick called out that Cam Reddish would have a better NBA career. Uh, than R.J. Barrett and also Zion Williamson. And that, that's and that's a huge call out. A lot of people wouldn't make that comment, but that's why Coach Quick is on this show, and that's why he that's why he is who he is. All right, so now let's let's slide uh, let's go about six miles down the road and let's talk about your point guard and uh, also uh, Mr. Little. Okay, I'll start off with Nasir first. Um, Nasir Little, I I felt like you know he should have came back to school for one more year. I think I just feel he needed to be have one year where he is the man. And he would have been on that Tar Heel squad next year. There's no doubt in my mind. But, I mean, when you're projected, the NBA, they draft on potential. And, and when you're projected as a top 15, top 17 pick, I mean, you, I guess you got to go. The NBA is always going to be there. So I'm not going to knock Nasir for going. I mean, but uh, there was times he had trouble um, figuring out defenses and everything at the collegiate level. And then there was times where he just killed teams in that 2-3 zone well, against Washington and Syracuse this year. He played outstanding because his skill set is great for that right there in the middle of that paint. His athleticism allowed him to just pick Syracuse and Washington apart. Um, and I just, I think, he got away. He got. A, he could have got away with playing a lot of small ball power forward in in today's collegiate game. But you know, he played. He played alongside a senior All American, as well as Cam um, Cam, Cam Johnson uh, and Kenny Williams, two other seniors who, you know, at at his position, he couldn't take those guys out of the lineup. I just couldn't see it. But at the next level, next year, I just think you'll see a lot of him in the D League, in the G League. Excuse me. All right. Now let's talk about uh, your point guard from uh, I think it was what it was from Goldsboro. Goldsboro, yes, sir. Um, Kobe White, I I think he's ready. There's no doubt in my mind. Carolina hadn't had a point guard like him in a long time. Somebody that can get the ball up and down the floor the way Roy Williams wanted it, as well as be able to knock down the shot. I I think I think Kobe White's ready. Now his handle. He has a little bit of a high handle, but it's somebody's going to get that kid and tinker with him. I think the perfect situation for him is, is in L.A. And I wish, I wish he would land with the Lakers because I think Magic would have him right. But um, I think Kobe White was ready, and he made the absolute correct decision. And then when you plan on a motion, he lost his dad right before his senior year in high school. Dad never got to see him play, so he's playing with an extra chip on his shoulder. To, to be great. So I, I'm, I'm happy for both kids, and I hope they both do well. You know what? And that's right, folks. And you're hearing uh, Coach Quick on Basketball More in the Game, uh, the hottest podcast this side of heaven. Not where we only talk about basketball. We talk about life. We talk about uh, outside the lines. But most importantly, we talk about uh, the genuineness of the game, the love of the game. But you know what, Coach? You're exactly right. You know, sometimes – you know, we look and we don't think these guys should be, you know, making moves. But these guys need to make the they need to make what's best interest uh, for their parents. A lot of times, uh, you know, these guys are not able to get out because you know, just like you see, lost his dad, and there's a lot of them that are single uh, parents uh, and they'll come from single parent homes. So, hey, listen, I want to toss this up and we'll uh, we'll we'll hit this topic and then we'll start winding this thing down. Let's talk a little bit about how does Virginia Tech let Buzz? How did how, how did how did they let him go? Well, I tell you what, I don't think they wanted to, but Buzz wanted to get back home, and I, I definitely hate to see him go because I think he's one of the best coaches in college basketball. He can recruit. He's a brilliant offensive mind, and the guy is so passionate about what he's doing. I hate Virginia Tech lost him, but I definitely understand the sentiment of wanting to get back home, and he's going to be able to recruit at Texas A&M, 
and he's going to bring that passion to the SEC that, that you've seen the last four to five years in the ACC. You know what, and this, uh, and we were talking about that earlier today, it's, it's going to be a tough yeah. build up to go back in Virginia Tech, you know, behind him. Uh, you know, we were talking, you know, earlier about, you know, there's opening, you know, does Johnny Dawkins roll in, does Steve Wojcikowski roll in? I tell you what, man, what, in my opinion, I've been in that arena enough in the last uh, five or six years, they need a new basketball arena. You know, they've gone in and, you know, you've done facelift after facelift after facelift, but there's only but so much you can do before you just have to come to terms and say, you know what, we've got to be able to, to build us another another arena, not just for seating capacity, but also for recruiting capacity. You, you can't do but so much to make, you know, to take an old dog and make him look like uh, something new. So, you know what, we bottom line is there's a post I actually put on my Facebook page where he's saying the prayer over his three seniors. So if anybody that has me on Facebook, go check that out. It was absolutely 100%. Uh, it blew me away. Uh, I really, you know, I, I appreciate what he did uh, as a coach, but I don't know him as an individual man. But when I heard this, what he did and what he said over his seniors, uh, by far, it just absolutely, it floored me. So I appreciate him as a man, appreciate him as a leader, uh, and also appreciate him as an X and O's guy. So listen, it's uh, uh, as we start winding this thing down on this uh, fantastic Final Four weekend, we can't thank Coach Quick enough uh, for his time, his passion, uh, his energy I had opportunity to go home last weekend. I saw uh, Coach Guthrie. We want to give him a shout out. Saw Coach Medlin and saw none other than Coach Carl Simon at uh, 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 Captain Tyrone Ross cele- uh, retirement. So we dedicate this podcast uh, to Captain Ross and his uh, years of service to the citizens of North Carolina, serving as one of the finest troopers in the history of North Carolina and everything that he ever done. Uh, for the state of North Carolina, the citizens, we definitely want to echo our thanks, our gratitude, and uh, the troopers uh, really lost a uh, leader and really lost a uh, dynamic uh, individual. So we wish uh, Tyrone and his family uh, to the next chapter uh, our Godspeed and best wishes from basketball more in the game. So, Coach Quick, I'm going to toss it over you for your final comments. Yes, sir. I'd like to say, first and foremost, hats off to Coach Tyrone Ross. I mean, Tyrone Ross on his um, retirement. Um, I couldn't think of a better guy either. He's a great guy, and I wish him nothing but the best, him and his family. Coach Goins, thank you for allowing me this opportunity to be back on the show and be able to um, talk about the game that I love, be able to talk about these young men who are progressing and getting ready to go to the next level. And I'll say this to you. I've seen the Buzz Williams prayer as well on Twitter, and it absolutely blew me away as well. And I wish Buzz Williams nothing but the best at Texas A&M. And, um, and I know he's going to be able to recruit there. He's going to turn that thing around just like he did at Virginia Tech. But, Coach, I, I, I hate I didn't get to see you last weekend. It would have been, been great to uh, touch bases with you. But I did get to see the picture you posted of you and Coach Salmon. You guys look great. And um, I just want to say thank you again for everything. Good luck to all four teams this weekend at the Final Four. Go Wahoos. I, hey, I got to go with the ACC. <laughs> you heard it right there. For Listen, folks, before we get out of here, we want to hit you with this scripture right here. It says, Lo, I'm with you always, even till the end of the world. And that's Matthew 28, 20. So, listen, on behalf of our entire staff of basketball, more in the game, our greatest co-host this side of heaven, Coach Michael T. Quick, out of uh, the great state of North Carolina via telephone, taking time out to be with us, talking about that Final Four. And just like Coach said, we wish all the teams uh, success. Enjoy this ride. You've worked hard. So to the fans and everybody, we thank you for your time tuning in. Don't forget us. Hit us up. Shoot us an email. Tune us in. Check us out. But as always, remember, basketball more in the game, and we dedicate the show to, to Tyrone Ross and his family. So, again, until the next time, we'll see you in the gym.